Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. On episode five, we're gonna attack the fuel system. Last time, fuel wasn't getting to the carburetor, so I'm gonna disconnect the hose at the uh, fuel pump. We're gonna blow some air through it and see if we're getting air back up into the fuel tank. After that, we're gonna check to see if the fuel pump's a problem. If it is, I've got a spare, or a new one, rather, that I just bought from the parts store. In case you're wondering why I'm standing in front of the Scout, well, it's because Scouts are awesome, and sometimes you have to give the old girl love, you know? I'm giving a lot of attention to the Bronco, and. I don't want her to get jealous, so let's get into it. Alright, filming this episode is going to be a bit tricky because the fuel pump is up here uh, attached to the engine block. you got an inlet and an outlet. Um, I'm going to disconnect what I think is the inlet here, blow air through this line, and it should have air coming back up through the uh, fuel tank, if I'm not mistaken, which I probably am. But let's find out. One thing to keep in mind is these Broncos have a selector switch, a manual selector switch for the fuel system. This is uh, the main tank, this is off, and that's the AUGS tank. So got to make sure you have it over on the main tank because as you know from episode one or two, the uh, AUGS tank isn't connected. You don't need a lot of PSI to do this. Remember a carbureted fuel injection only runs at about 8 PSI. But I don't have a helper today to hold their hand over the uh, the gas tank to see if there's air coming out. So I just tied off a glove, but a balloon or any other rubber flexible airtight product will do. So I'm going to go blow some air into it and see what happens. Now, I'm not 100% sure about that selector level so, lever, so I'm going to move it to the other two positions, try again, and see if that works. I can hear air escaping, which means it's probably, that's the AUGS tank for sure. I'm going to try the third position and see if that makes a difference. Okay, none of those worked, so on to the next step of troubleshooting. Okay, here we are under the car. This tube runs back to the, uh, the three-way valve that's under the driver's seat. I disconnected it, blew air through it, and that goes through fine. So it's from here to the gas tank somewhere that the, uh, that the blockage is. If you remember in episode, episode two, I pointed out this goofy uh, weld here that holds the trailer hitch in the back. Now, the thing is, I can't drop the tank with that in place, but I'm going to try to disconnect the hose, the supply hose, and see if I can blow it out or, or figure out what is going on to, to have this blockage. If I can't, then i got to drop the tank. If I have to drop the tank, then I have to cut this booger weld out and, uh, well, that's going to sort of ruin my fuel troubleshooting day. But it had to be done anyway, so say la vie. Before I went tearing everything up like I always do, I thought, Matt, this is where you screw things up. This is where stuff gets expensive. Stop and think. So I took my air compressed air and I blew it into that plastic hose and I heard a thunk, blah, 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 blah. So whatever was blocking that, uh, that fuel passage, I blew it back out in the fuel tank. Now, obviously that's not very good for an engine, but the point is, I think the path is clear. So I'm gonna hook everything back up, blow through again, see if I hear bubbling. If I do, I think we can start it up. Okay, time for a cold one. <sighs> Delicious. So, I was able to get the fuel up to the fuel pump Try to start the car, wouldn't come up to the carb, 
took apart the fuel line from the curb to the fuel pump, blew that out, that was perfectly clear. So that means the only thing left is really the fuel pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one of those on. And this is getting to be a lot of work, but I bought a fuel pump, I kind of expected it. I took the fuel pump off and it appeared to work fine when I was just bench testing it. So I went back to the drawing board, I grabbed the siphon and I started siphoning out the gas that's in the tank. And this is what's coming out. I don't know if I can focus on that, just be patient. There you go. So this stuff, and I don't know what it is, it looks like just years of gunk and organics, dead rat poop or who knows rust. Okay, so what I ended up doing was installing a fuel filter instead of dropping the tank because I don't want to drop the tank. And installed a new fuel pump. And I'll show you the routing here. Basically, I put new lines here. Put some new lines, put a clear tube in there for temporary and I can see. I won't keep that on forever, but I think she's ready to see if it uh, sucks fuel. By now you guys know the drill. Positive. Negative. Turn it over a few times. Alright, so I got fuel coming up but I'm leaking here so I'm going to put some better uh, some better hose clamps on there. But hey, it's progress. All right, that's episode five in the can. She's running, the uh, PB blaster is burning off the headers, but it's running smooth. And then I did that. Sounds great, and that's it for Matt's Garage. Thank you.